uh, I think I'm going to admit that, uh, Pastor Hamilton, and I'm going to go to you and ask you for prayer and then open up as the Lord leads you to do. Oh, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you to do it, Lord. We just bow down before you today, Lord. Lord, we submit to you, Lord. We're, 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 we're studying, Lord, your, your methods of humility, Heavenly Father God, Jesus. We're looking at the lessons that you've given us. So we bow down, Lord. We, we want to return back to, to the, the creation of man, and we want to be subjected to, the, to the, the mud and the dirt form. But we want to be reformed today, Lord, in our steps of humility, Lord, in our dying of self, in our of submission to you, Heavenly Father, today, Lord. We die. We die of self. We bow down before you, Lord Jesus. We totally decrease that you may increase. Lord, we, 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 we ask you to, to overtake us today, Lord Jesus. Not like any time before, Heavenly Father God, but we want a fresh newness, a, a, a fresh anointing, Lord, a fresh direction, Heavenly Father God, as we submit totally to you. Not to ourselves, Lord, but to you. Help us to move out of the way, Lord Jesus. Help us to be more like you. Help us to see with clear eyes in the spirit, Lord, the direction, the path, the guidance, the focal point, Lord, that you would have us to stand And we can withstand all the wiles of the enemy, Lord. We want to be, that's where we want to be today, Lord. That's our desire, to be more like you. So, Lord, we bow down, Lord. We we, we enter into your presence, Lord. We come before you, Lord, with thanksgiving. We open our hearts with praise. We totally submit to you. That not our will be done, but your will be done, Father. We want more of you and less of us. We want more of you and less of us. Lord, we come today with a spirit of expectancy. That we're not just praying the normal prayer, Lord. We're praying with the, with the, with the agreement of expectancy that, Lord, you already have done the work. Lord, we want to get in line and, 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 and come into the revelation knowledge of you today, Lord, that we can see you on the inside that will take us to another level, Lord, to a different place, to a different dimension, Heavenly Father God, with a new, with a new path <laughs> directed by you, our steps that are ordered by you in your spirit, by us submitting to you. John says that you will increase, but first he must decrease. Lord, we decrease today, Lord. We want to, we want to rely on your word. We want your word to overtake us today, Lord. We're asking for a, a new overtaking, Lord. We're asking for a, a new move, Lord, a, 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 a fresh revelation of your word today. And, Lord, we come, we come ready to receive. We position ourselves right now, Lord Jesus, to be in line with your word, your will, your way. Your word, your will, your way. Your word, your will, and your way. We die. We die of self. We die of self. We die of self. We die of self. So that you may live today, Lord. We desire to follow you. So we get on the cross willingly and we die with you today, Lord. We hang on the cross and we submit totally to you. And in the celebration of your death and your burial and your, oh, Jesus, your resurrection, Lord, we want to, we want to experience, <laughs> hallelujah, the lesson that you led by with such a fine example, that not your will be done, but God's will be done. And all the obstacles and all the things and all the voices and all the, all the, the matter of this world that, that distracts us and tells us to get off a course, Lord, we bind those things. 
And we separate ourselves, Lord, to get in a new atmosphere of praise, a new atmosphere of worship, not to the God of this world, but to the God of all, to the great I am, to the first, the last, the beginning, and the end, God all by yourself, God almighty, the majesty, my heavenly father, we worship you today in spirit and in truth, Lord, for you are so good to us. And we just want to say thank you today, Lord. We just want to worship you today. We just want to worship you today, Lord. We just want to worship you today. Come on, family, just lift your hands today. And let's submissively bow down and worship him. I don't know where you're at, what you're doing, but you don't have to uh, uh, actually stop driving or, or get... But just bow down to your spirit today. Bow down and worship Him. Worship Him. Oh, worship Him. Bow down and worship Him. Oh, come on, come on. Oh, we dream. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, family, let's worship today. Let's get in a different place. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, let's worship. Worship, worship, worship. Enter into his courts with thanksgiving. Oh, enter into Jesus. Come on, lift him up in praise. Bow down, bow down and worship him. Hallelujah. Worship him. Oh, come on, family, lift your hands. Come on, lift up your voices today. We have all the the lines open up. Let's lift up and praise together. Let's unify in the spirit. Come on, let's worship. The consuming fire. Hallelujah. what you've been going through this whole week or even just this day this is the place where we can reside in praise and worship to him that's where we can decrease of ourselves and allow God to be the greater if we are the lesser by submission by the act of bowing down by the act of entering into his presence in holiness we rely totally on him ourselves to him. We allow God to be God all by himself. It is in the worship. Oh, hallelujah. Bow down. 
bow down and worship him. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we thank you today, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you are in this place. We thank you, Lord, that you are in control, Lord. We we totally are in submission. We declare, Lord, right now that anything that is not in line with your will and the and the and the and the the, the, the plan and the purpose that you have for us, Lord, we remove it right now by the Spirit and the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you today, Lord, on Good Friday. <laughs> We thank you, Lord, for for the activation of our salvation. This is the day that it all started. This is the day that it began, that that it was activated to go into fruition, that our sins would be forgiven, and we would have a a, a life more abundantly than we could ever think or ask or even expect. So we thank you today, Lord, for your sacrifice. We thank you today, Lord, for your humility. We thank you, Lord, for your willingness to die for me, to die for her, to die for us, to die for all. We thank you. And, Lord, we set this off today, Lord, that as we go into the death, the burial, and the resurrection of your example of dying, of submitting, of being humiliated, Willingly, we want to learn from you today, Lord, so we submit and we request that, Lord, you speak to us clearly and that, Lord, we receive you with honor, with a receptive heart, with a willing mind to change the way we think. Lord, we pray that you let this mind be in us today, which was also in you. That to die for a friend was greater than anything else. To give your life for something that was really not even considered to you other than giving freely, Lord, we thank you for that today. We worship you, Lord. We praise you. We honor you in your son Jesus' name. And all those in agreement said, amen, 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 amen. And come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm excited. This is this is my this is my new life. This is my change every year. This is where I, I look forward. Woo, Jesus. I look forward to new life. I look forward to die. I look forward to being buried. <laughs> I look forward to being resurrected and put back in place and getting back in order every year because we're not perfect. And we have to set standards and set goals. And this is my goal. This is my time of the year that I re, re, reinvent what God has said me to be. If I'm off track, this is where I can get back on track. If I, if I'm, if I lose, if I'm losing direction and, 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 uh, and, and positioning, this is where I can get myself right back in line with where I'm supposed to be. But I thank God today. Woo, Jesus. Thank you for dying for me. I don't know about you, but it's special to me because it changed my life, and it will never be the same, and neither will yours. Especially when we confess with our mouth and we believe in our heart that he is my Lord and Savior. He's my personal. That means one-on-one. He's my personal Lord and Savior. And no, I can't share him. Because he's my personal. And, yes, you can't share because he's your personal. But when we come together, you know, he is so great that we can all worship him together in oneness. But we must learn to know him one-on-one, personally. So I thank God for you today. Welcome to another adventure, another day that the Lord has made, Provoke Fridays. The day that if we have gotten any kind of misdirection, we can at least end the day with a, a, a swift push in the right direction by the Holy Spirit to get in line, to get in order, and to get our get our focus back in place. Amen? Woo, Jesus, what a study this week, family. What a study on humility. What a study about dying to ourselves. What a principle. You know, uh, when... when uh, the study was brought forward at the beginning of the week. It was like a light bulb just went off on me because this is how God has changed my life. A little testimony. Uh, when God had um, 
put me through. You know, I, people will tell you, I've been in the fire, and, and by purpose, I probably, you know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were, 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 were delivered from the fire by, by their faith. But, you know, some of us can stay in the fire longer than we're supposed to. I'll admit it. I stayed in the fire and kept burning and, and, and allowing these things to happen willingly. But when I heard the word of God to say, here, now you must continue this self-infliction and go through. The first thing that God ministered to me was me being able to humble myself, not to him, but to everybody else. That humility was not something that I needed to learn in worshiping him because by me submitting to him, it's what he he wants me to submit to him. But for, for me to humble myself, Jesus came to show us how to humble ourselves to one another and that his likeness would become a likeness unto us and that we would now start to project the same life of humility. In Luke 26 and 26, he says, I am in the midst of you as he that serveth. Wow. In the midst of us. Not to, not to lead us and, and bark at us and, and, and throw all these different instructions at us, but to show us by example, oh, Jesus, as a servant, to serve. Everything that Jesus came, came to show us how to live the life that we must live until the day of judgment, until the day of reconciliation. <laughs> Ooh. I'm excited. I'm woo, I'm excited. But there's a long road to go and in the midst of that road we must learn the the nuggets and the and the principles of God's word that, that will take us where? Higher. When? When? Now. No longer are we going to wait. <laughs> We're going to go higher when? Right now in the name of Jesus. Now we've talked about it. You've heard this through P2P that out of the mind of God we were created. When he spoke, what happened? It was created. And it was what? Good. And then we talked about within time is space. Space is matter. And then within matter is us. And then we now come to a point where we have to develop ourselves in this flesh to be greater in the spirit than we are in the flesh because our flesh will always battle the things that say humble yourself. The flesh will always battle the things that say you're not like that anymore. The flesh will always battle. You remember we talked about if someone kicks you, and I know I use this all the time, but it's a very good analogy is that if someone kicks you, your first reaction in your emotions is that you're going to kick them back. Oh, how dare you? What? But now the old, you know, the turning of the other cheek now gives you the opportunity to say, I don't do that anymore. And let me pray with you, my brother. I understand you're going through some things, and, and I don't appreciate you kicking me, but I'm not going to kick you back because that's not the way I am anymore. But we can't go there anymore. We have to set standards. Do not kick me. <laughs> Let's pray. But, but the flesh will always react first to sin. Your reaction. Ooh, uh, someone drives in a car and pushes in front of you. It's not a humble action that comes before us. It's, it's how dare you. Then you see me getting in that parking spot first, or then you see me already in the turning lane, or then you see me with my brakes on. That's not, that's, see, it's not a natural char- characteristic. This flesh is, is drawn and led by the things of this world, and that's why it says not be not conformed to this world. It's a fight. It's a battle that we have to pull away from the way the world will pull us into to be submissive, to be servant-like, to be humble. Like who? Christ. Like who? No, no, I don't want you to be like me. No, I don't want you to be like her. No, he doesn't want you. He wants you to be like him. Clarity for anyone who hasn't heard it before. You cannot be God or Jesus, but you can be just like him. (laughs) You are supposed to resemble. We are supposed to look like. We are supposed to act like him. 
His lessons come to give us character. His lessons come that we can be habitual, that our actions become natural by our new life. Our new life where? New life in Christ. See, the word keeps directing us is that the way Christ lived his life is the format and the example on how to live your life. Where we now switch it out the way because no longer are you worried about how he's living his life, but now the concern, family, is for us to worry about how we live our lives, how we resemble our lives according to Christ's life. Yes, he dressed nice. Yes, she has this. Yes, the, but that gets you nothing, and there's no profit, there's no gain. But in living and looking and resembling Christ, it becomes natural. It becomes habitual. See, habits aren't bad. You know, a lot of times we think about a habit, we always identify a habit as being bad. No, a habit can be good or not so good, but it can be great because you can take a bad habit, and now take it and replace it with a good habit. Now, here's a free one for you, family. You know I love giving away free nuggets, but here's a free one for you. To get rid of a bad habit, you cannot just be, it cannot just be forgotten to be long-lasting and fulfilling. You must replace that bad habit, no matter what that cross, no matter what you're bearing, no matter what you're going through, you must replace it with a good habit. If your workout is not performing and, and, and producing, your body, you need to change workouts. And now you can take that bad habit and turn it into a good habit where now it produces life. We are the branch that's connected to the vine that we should produce what? Much fruit. But you must be connected and you must be in position. And you must look like, you must look like, the one that gives us life, and life more abundantly, Jesus Christ. The character, the character of Jesus Christ. Does that, the question today, does that character live, and is it not just living, but is it working in you? Proverbs 3 and 34, it tells us that a humble person receives God's favor. It didn't say that you had to go through this, this, this. It says a humble person receives God's favor, Proverbs 3 and 34. Proverbs 11 and 2 says that a humble person finds wisdom. It didn't say you will, you can, you shall. It says you, that you it didn't even put a, 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 a contractual but will, shall. It says a humble person receives God's favor. That's not, see, that is a declaration. That's not even a promise. Most of the time we see that if you do this, it shall come to pass. This word is telling me that if I am humble, if I submit me and let him live, we say it all the time, less of me and more of you, I die so you can live. I decrease so you can increase. Now, when you, re when you become humble, and watch this. I had to identify with something. I, I just couldn't, you know, I, I'm keeping it real with you. Humility for me, it was kind of hard because I had to now identify with something. And I love shoes. So God had me identify with a pair of shoes. He said, you know what, son? You, you're not getting it when you're just trying to preach it and talk it and rewrite it. And he said, you need something to identify. You need a touchstone. Remember, a touchstone is remembering God's goodness. So I had to get something that gave me a touchstone. Remember the pillars that when they crossed over, they, they had the pillars to remind them of where they came from? The, the, you need a touchstone that reminds you to stay humble to stay submissive, to stay in order. S believe me, sin is coming. Just because you get in a position of humility, that doesn't stop the enemy from trying to, trying to bring pride and trying to bring doubt and fear and pain. But it also but it puts you in a position to fight and to stand and to withstand not, not just one, but all the fiery darts, all the enemy's weapons. 
Remember, and they are not carnal. They are spiritual. They're not physical. They don't come at you. They come spiritual. Humbleness. You find wisdom. Proverbs 11 and 2. Proverbs 22 and 4 says, A humble person finds riches, honor, and life. Look at those declarations to humility. 1 Peter 5 and 6. A humble person will be exalted by God. Look at, ooh, look at the promise. 1 Samuel 25, a humble person has the ability to get along with others. Now, I'm, this, that wasn't meant to step on toes. But if you have a problem interacting with people and you can just not find a clique in a, in, a, in a group that you can get along with, it may not be the group. It may be us and our inability to humble ourselves around others. Family, listen, we know in the body of Christ it's hard to get along because everybody wants to be in charge. Everybody wants it to be their word. It, it, you know, and I have, I, here, let's not go there because, you know, it's God's word. And so we all have the right. But for us to get along, for us to come on one accord, we talk about unity. We talk about oneness. We talk about coming together. But it never works because we're really not in the, in, in the position or the understanding of what to be humble really means. And we think humble to be humble just makes us weak or to be humble just makes us lose out. Or to be humble takes us out of first place. But the word of God will now fortify that that is not the truth. Favor, wisdom, riches, honor, life, to be exalted by God. And then it gives you the ability to get along with others. To what? To get along with others. It's important us to have relationship. The relationship, see, God intended for us to be in relationship with him. But just like any other principle, it was given to us to be in relationship with him so we can learn how to be in relationship with others. It's not just how to, how to embrace him and love him. It's so we can love one another. When? Right now. To have the characteristics. See, I have the characteristics of, of humility. Remember I just said I had to get a touchstone. So I got a pair of shoes that were very comfortable, a pair of loafers. Now, anyone who's done, I love to dress and dress and make it match and all that. But, you know, for a season, and people that knew me close, close, I wore those shoes even with suits and different like because I had to, I had to identify with something that reminded me constantly about humility. Because every time pride r raised, raised up, if those shoes were in my closet, they weren't a physical, touchable, tangible reminder for me. Because <laughs> that's how my that's how my body re uh, reacts to. To remind me, those shoes, putting them on my feet, changed me just by putting them on my feet because now it made me hold myself accountable to what I had already honored those shoes to. No, I didn't just pick a pair of shoes and get on and put them on. I took them to the Lord. I put them on the altar. I submitted to him, and I said, I sacrifice these shoes because I want your blessing and your anointing of humility that when I put these on, they hold me accountable. Well, Pastor, this is extreme. Well, you know what, family? It's going to take extreme actions to get extreme results. I want a better life. I'm sick and tired of being the yeah, – I, I don't want it that way anymore. I don't want to have to keep going through the same things over and over again. So we, we family, have, have to make standards and steps and, and goals. <laughs> Remember we said last week to have that focal point that we press to the mark of the high calling? Well, the goals that set are not about to be richer. The goals that we set are not to be more, uh, uh, more famous or, or to be more notarized and those things, but to be more like Christ. And if any shoe that I would su suggest that worked for me, and I've tried a bunch of different shoes, the shoes that helped me the most were the shoes of humility. Because now I can see favor in my life as a reward. 
wisdom comes because, you know, it's not just me flying off the hook at what, what, what I think should be said. But I now rely on God in the humility spirit, the servanthood, to rely that God's answers are better than mine. The riches. No, no, no. Do I have a, a, a Bentley outside? No. Because, uh, no. Do I have a, a, a jet? No. Do I have, no, no, but I have riches. Oh, Jesus. That are uncomparable to the Bentleys and the things like that because I have peace that surpasses all understanding by myself. I'm, I'm arriving to a, a place that, that I can see for myself what God is doing for me. And then being able to now through example and through, through, through the wisdom of his eyes, seeing what he wants to do for the body of Christ. Through submission. Through the character. Say that to yourself. The character. The character of Christ. The character of Christ. The character of Christ. Those characteristics. Those characteristics that will make you, will force you to be held accountable to him and not anything else. If you could with me today, turn your Bibles, family. And there's going to be a, keep a pen. Keep, this for both Fridays. Keep a pen. There's going to be a lot of more scriptures. But we're going to go to today, Philippians 2. And this is being led by the Holy Spirit, believe me, can, completely. Philippians 2. No, 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 no. Back up. When you get to 2, if you back up, it should be on the same page. But if not, maybe the page before. But go back to 127. Hallelujah. Christ came. Christ came for you. Today is your day, family. Today is your day, if it never has happened before, to accept it just for you. This, this teaching, this principle is just for you. You know what? You are God's greatest creation. Your mindset must be in line with being God's greatest creation. Because mine is, I'm God's greatest creation all by myself. And he confirms that by me being in line with him, I now get in line with what he created. The likeness of his own what? Image. Philippians 1, chapter, I mean, verse 27. It says, only let your conduct, your conduct, your conduct, the way you act, the way you treat people, the way you are perceived, only let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and you see and see you or am absent, I may hear of your affairs that you stand fast in one spirit, one spirit. See, we got this. Oh, Jesus! Here, I'm gonna keep reading on that one. In one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith. Of the gospel, one, one, one spirit, not the one spirit that we make all together, but the one spirit that we're all thriving for, individually, individually, as we come together collectively, now God comes to us and he will unite us in the oneness of him. When we submit, come to him with all honesty. And with all submission, striving. So it says that, 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 the, that the report will be, will be given. It says, I may hear of your affairs that you stand fast in one spirit, the spirit of God. With one mind, the mind of God. Striving together for the faith of the gospel of God. Oneness, the humility of being oneness for something greater. Greater is he that is in us, in me, than the evil that's in the world. It's greater than anything else, and we must submit to it. Down to verse 2, I mean chapter 2, verse 1. Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affliction and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, there it is again, like-minded, 
having the same love, being of one accord of one mind. Let nothing be done through you through selfish ambition or conceit. Selfish ambition or conceit. It can't be about us. It can't be about what's going to make me uh, uh, successful. It's not going to be, it can't be about what's going to make us successful. It has to be about what's going to glorify God. Family, if you're doing it in your life and it's not being done and God is getting the most glory out of it, I would tell you, if you are trying to get in line with him, it must be made from a bad habit into a good habit. Everything in our lives for us to be totally successful, to be in the full fruition of the Holy Spirit, to get all that God says he has for you, we must eliminate, eliminate everything that's not in line with his word. I know it hurts. And I know there's some things coming up in somebody's spirit right now saying, wow, I got to get rid of that. Oh, that's not acceptable. Oh, he's been telling me, telling me, telling me, telling me. The things that God has been speaking to you and you feel uncomfortable about, those are the things that he is showing us that we need to move around and get rid of. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind. See, the way we think, the loneliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. You mean to tell me, Pastor E, that I have to make Evangelist Bernard feel better than myself? Yes. You mean I have to exalt the, the, the ushers and I'm the bishop better than myself? Yes. Your position does not alleviate us from the commandments and the principles of the word of God. See, see that's what happens is that we get so full of ourselves, and I know there's nobody on this line, but, 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 but just in case it is, but maybe I'm talking to myself, but when we get ahead of ourselves, we think we are excluded from certain instructions in the world. Well, I'm here to say today that if no matter how good and how big and how better you get, these principles are meant to be repetitious in our lives, and we will not lose ground, family, when we stand on the word consistently. Take it up daily. If you want to follow him, take up your cross daily. That means we got work to do daily, and we must stand on these principles daily, repetitiously. Makes it easy, then pleasurable, then often, then I got a habit. Remember, we said you could take a bad habit and turn it into a good habit. Okay, here, here's an example. Here's a principle. Say repo. Repo, R-E-P-O-H. Repo. Repo is a principle that if used in order, can take a bad habit and turn it into a good habit. Or it can even show you how a no habit has turned into a habit. Now, I don't know if any, how many have smoked before or, 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 or remember if you did the first time you ever smoked a cigarette. And I have to use this example because there's a little pain and suffering if you ever the first, remember the first time you smoked a cigarette. But the first time you smoked a cigarette, that first drag, believe me, well, for me, it, it was not comfortable. It, I got green and I threw up and I, it, was un, it was not pleasurable at all. But it was the first time I ever did it. And because of whatever reason I was led to it and, and, the, and the resemblance of my parents, and, and I'm not knocking my parents, but I saw my parents smoking. So those, those are my parents. I want to be like who? My parents. So, I, you know, it was easy for me to start smoking because both my parents smoked. Nothing against them. But I'm showing you how uh, our children can look at certain things that we do and want to resemble them. No, no, no matter how bad they are, you know, we always say that, how bad. But, but you're the parent. We're the parent. And they have to always want to be just like your parent. So I resembled my parent. And the first time I smoked a cigarette, it was, uh, it was uncomfortable. I got sick. I didn't smoke one right away. But a couple of days later, after it, it, it faded away, and, and some friends of mine were smoking again, I hit it again, and, 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 and I gagged a little bit, and I choked, but it, it wasn't as bad the first time. I threw up once, not twice, and, it, and so, and, and then and, and we, on and on, the more I did it in repetition, repo, R, the more I did it in repetition, it became E, easy to do it. The more I did it. See, at first it was, it was difficult, but the more I did it, it became easy. And family, when, when something becomes 
easy. Now we will step into P, which is pleasure. Easy will now turn into pleasure because the more you do it, and the easier it gets, the more pleasurable it is to do it. So going to get that cigarette enlightenment was now a pleasure. And once you do something in pleasure, you'll do it, oh, often. And when you do something often, family, you have now either made a good habit into a bad habit or a bad habit into a good habit because you have now done it repetitiously, easy, pleasure, often, habit, repetition, easy, pleasure, often, habit. See, that principle in order if you repetitiously now say, I, I'm done smoking and I'm going to practice over and over and not smoke. The first time you tried the cold turkey, it was hard. But the more you practiced it, the easier it became. And then it became pleasurable because you didn't smell it on your clothes no more. People aren't asking you, did you just come out from smoking a cigarette? Now you did it often, and now it becomes a habit. See, this lifestyle, this, 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 this characteristic has to become habitual. We have to practice what he preached. So now we practice what we preach. Now we give and we make disciples that don't just do what we say, but they see and they do what we do. We become humble. It says nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit in verse 3, but in lowliness of mind, let each better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. You got to humble yourself. You got to be able to say, you know what? I know I'm hungry, and and I, I was gonna go get me a steak, but but my brother might be hungry, and I'm just gonna humble myself enough to ask him, man, would you like to go get a pork chop? Where you got enough to get two? See, that's 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 an act of humility. He didn't ask you. See, most of us are waiting for somebody to, for, uh, for for them to ask for us to ask for an offering that we feel humble enough to give. Uh, we're waiting for somebody to to tell how bad it's going on in the refrigerator for us to feel humble enough to give. When we are supposed to have such a humble characteristic that we do it just because it's the right thing and it's the thing that God has given us as a tool to be just like him. When? Right now. You humble yourself before him. You'll get favor. You'll have wisdom. You'll, be, you'll find riches, honor, and life. You'll be exalted by God, and you'll get along with others by following the instructions of the Holy Spirit. Verse 5, it says, Let this mind be in you, which was also... <laughs> In Christ Jesus, whom being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. Man, I got to keep my rep, man. I, 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 you know what? We cannot look. See, reputation means nothing if we're going to be like him because he came with no reputation. He put it all under. He, let it, he left it in heaven. He came here with the willingness to humble himself without being asked. He gave his life without me having to call him up and say, I need my sins forgiven. Come and die for me. He did it in a humble state because it was his character. And that's the character that we must embrace. Taking the form of a servant and coming in the likeness of men, you know, I, I'm not God, and I, and I know I can't be, but to think of having the power to create all of this that we look out our windows or, or look in front of us in our living rooms or look at us on our laptops, and you look at all of this that God created, and to be have that much power, ooh, to have that much power, and then to say, I'm going to give it all up for those people down there that just won't listen that won't follow instructions. How many times do we have to give them chance after chance after chance to get this thing that it's about me and not them? Oh, I'll go here. And coming, this is the Bible, and coming in the likeness of me. And do you see the power of that? He died of all the power he had. He created earth and sweat. Six days on the seventh day, he what? Rested. The Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the Great I Am, my Comforter, came in the likeness of men and being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled him. 
Ooh, Jesus. Somebody ought to be jumping up and down, giving God praise, because he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death. Even the death of the cross. Come on, we talk it all the days. If you desire to follow him, take up your cross daily. We are not even getting compared to the cross that he did and came and got on. He was nailed to this wood. He was embarrassed. He was scrutinized. He was punished. He was beaten. He was spit on. He, every low thing they could do to him, they did to him to kill his spirit. But he said, he looked up and he said, do I, do I have to do this for the, and he said, you know what, no, 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 Father, not my will. Not my will. Not, not my will, but your will be done. Therefore, verse 9, therefore God also has, has highly exalted him and given him the, the name. Lord, to the glory of God the Father. We want to make it, we must 
confess. We must encourage every tongue. We must press the word. We must go and make tongues speak and confess the name of Jesus. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do your good pleasure. No, 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 no. My good pleasure. Uh, uh, No. It says, and to do for his good pleasure. That's why you always hear me say, if it's in your life and it's not for his good pleasure, get it out of there. Because everything that was meant to be done for you, through you, was for his good pleasure. Do all things, and this might step on somebody's toe, and I know you read this scripture before, but I hear it. you need to hear it and hear it personally. Do all things without murmuring and disputing. See, that's humility. That's the characteristic. See, it's not giving you a definition. It's giving you the characteristic, the habitual lifestyle of humility. See, it worked work for me was those shoes. Every time it started rearing up in me, oh, oh no, oh, I looked down. It reminded me of the humility that I have honored to God on the, on the altar. I have sacrificed my pride. I have sacrificed myself. I have put me in a position where I have to hold myself accountable and understand that the principle was put in place for me to embrace accountability, for me to embrace humility. By example from God, but no longer do he have to hold me accountable because when I come in line and in order with him, I hold myself accountable. So the shoes for me helped me to get in line but repetitiously, easy. The more I did it, it was, you know, at first I, I wanted to wear the shoes that matched, the shoes that looked better, felt better, sounded better, felt better instead of the ones that were better for me, because they reminded me that, you know what, it's not about you and what it looks like. It's about what God has, what you've honored to God. So it reminded me that, hey, I, ooh, wait a minute, I got a covenant. I got a connection with him. Ooh, okay, hold on. Because so, every time pride rises up, and it's, it's, and it's often, let's keep it real, and it's often, those shoes said, no, 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 get, 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 get the under my foot. And those shoes helped and, and showed me how to develop the characteristic of Jesus Christ in humility. Do all things without murmuring and disputing. How many times do we complain? Oh, yes, yeah, we, somebody asked you how you're doing. Oh, I can't complain. But deep down in your spirit, you've been complaining and murmuring. I'm, I'm sorry. I know I'm not talking to anybody on this line. But for the people who listen to the archives, you in your spirit, you've been murmuring and complaining about everything that's not going the way we think it should go. And we think just because we don't speak it out. See, where, where does it happen? When? Now. Now, in the brain. When we complain and murmur in your thoughts, you are now complaining and murmuring to God, not to man. I'd rather tell you, that was for me, that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine, oh, Jesus, as lights in the world. See, your humility will make you shine. Your ability to, to choose to be humble to choose to be nice, to choose to be acceptable, to choose to get along with everybody, to choose humility over pride, over anger, over hate, over unforgiveness. See, humility works in all all of those factions because to forgive, you must humble yourself. Come on, I know somebody can testify with me there. Just really forgive that person that hurt you. You must humble yourself. Humility has to be in place for you to honestly look at somebody who hurts you and say, I forgive you. You can't do it on your own. That characteristic, that, that, that spirit, that likeness of Christ must be in you. 16, holy fast, the word of life. 
That's humility. See, that's humility because to now rely on the word of life, the word of truth, you must humble yourself. Because everybody, every time somebody tells you, man, where did they say that in the Bible? Then pride comes up. I know the scriptures. Instead of being humble and say, well, hey, man, check out the Bible. Let's just read it. See, see, we get so much. We we we've arrived. We we that all. You know, we all we know all the the, the key scriptures to, to quote. We get to a point when somebody don't don't you know question it. We don't even want to open our Bibles no more. See, that takes humility. To say, you know what? It ain't about me. I know I know the word, but let me show him where I got it from. See, that's humility. See the characteristic. See, see the likeness. Because I know, here, let me speak for me, because I know the characteristic and the likeness of me does not resemble humility. I know I'm the only one. But, 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 my, but my natural, uh, my flesh, uh, my, my five senses do not resemble humility. Pride. Selfishness. Me, me, my, my, I. Not we, not us. A lot of people ask me, you know, they, they be like, hey, man, what you got going on? Man, when we got this going on and we got that, and they be like, man, who's, who's we? All of us. Because I must see, watch, this, watch the characteristic in the life, because I must train myself repetitiously. It wasn't easy at first because it's about me. But repetitiously, I did it over and over and over again. It became easy for me to say, you know what, no, it's about us. Who's us? Well, I, I'm, who, who's doing the graphics? Me. Well, who's doing this? Me. me. Well, how, why do you say us? Because I must control and, 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 and design myself and, and habitually get in a order to set it up. It ain't about me. See, I have to speak the words. I have to speak the words of life, the word of life, the word of life, the word of life. I can't talk doubt. I can't talk the things that are going to be contradictory to God being glorified in every, every, everything in my life. See, see, I must set a standard. We, family, must set a standard that our lifestyle is pleasing and acceptable in his eyesight. Stop worrying about impressing pastor or bishop. We are supposed to be acceptable in his pleasing, in his sight, not the sight of men. In men, we must poke out our chest. In, 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 in men, we must, be, we must be as equal. In, in men, we must fight. In men, we must struggle. No, 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 no. See, in Christ, we can be like Christ, and we don't, we don't fight the battle in the flesh. We know that it's a spiritual battle, and it's not about him or her or, or those things or those, 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 those obstacles, those trials. It's, not about, it's, not, it's, it's about God in me showing me, you know what, no matter what I go through, I must rejoice. No matter how much I'm in pain, I must find out that it's not in the, in the, in the uh, medicine cabinet, that, but it's in the way I have set my life in order with you. Do I want to resemble you? Do I want to be like you? Do I want to really, really, really see a change in my life? It's up to us, family. We have to set the standard. We can talk and we can preach and we can sing and we can write and we can do all the things about humility. But if we do not embrace it as truth and say, you know what, today is the day that I make me a humility pin or a humility necklace or, or a rubber band and just write humility on it or wear a different sock. And it reminds me when I'm in, you know, even time when I get pride, I might have to go change socks because it reminds me. I might have to take this new watch and, 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 cr and crown it and, and usher it and, and offer it <laughs> that it can now be a symbol that I can do better. When? Right now. I, I, I don't have to wait to get better. I can do it when? Right now. 16, holding fast to the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Holding fast to the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ. There will be a day of Christ. We are fighting this fight because we want to rejoice in the day of Christ. I don't want to be standing there worried about what he's going to say. I want to, rejo I want to be in a spirit of rejoicing already because I know where I'm going. 
by the standard that I've set, the lifestyle that I've chosen, the characteristics that I've embraced as truth, and said, I want to be just like that. That's my hero. That's who I want to be like. Oh, yes, I, pray, I, I, I love the fireman that saved the cat. I love the, the policeman that, that, that stopped the robbery. I love the man that pushed him out of the way of the car. But my hero, for, for it to work for me and my system, my hero has to be Jesus Christ, and everything else is just there to edify and to lift up Jesus Christ. Holy fast to the word of life, so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain nor labored in vain. Yes. And if I am being poured out as a drink offering on the sacrifice and the servants of your faith, I am glad woo, and rejoice with you. For the same reason, you also be glad and rejoice with me. Don't be hating on nobody and don't worry about what God is doing in their life. Rejoice. Because the more I rejoice for you, then it's going to be able, I'm going to see you rejoicing for me. As I give, see, 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 it's all about humility. Giving, submitting, lowering, lowering, lowering. You know, you know, to be to be in a form of mud was was the less on the world. There was plants that were greater than the mud. There there were there were trees greater than the mud. There there were there were animals greater than the mud. But man was made from the lowest of it. And you know what? It's not so bad to return back to mud. When God is the source of everything that we do, and we have now embraced this life. In Christ, these characteristics that will change me and will, I will never be the same. See, my confession is that I will never be the same. My declaration is that I'll never be the same. My hero is Jesus because I want to be just like him. Yes, I can still have fun. Yes, I can still, you know what, but if Jesus is sourcing everything I do, they, they, everywhere I go, they see Jesus coming. Because I resemble him. I act like him. I respond like him. And I'm willing to serve before being served. I'm willing to give before being given to. Not to get anything back in return. Not to get something special. Not to be put in a different place. But to be in line with him and to resemble him. Right now. Right now, see, see, I need the lesser things to die, the things that are going to go away, the things that are going to going to break, the things that are, are going to lose value, the things that are that are not going to I can't take them to heaven with me, the things that are that are only there to get me from point A to point B, the things that only suffice what God has called me to do. See, those things will pass away. Yeah, well. But the things of God will stand. Will they, the things of God will hold fast. And God, oh Jesus, and God will do something in you that nobody else can. God will direct you in a path that will be pleasing to His eyesight. That He'll be willing to see that you have got it. That you've arrived, not to get glorified, not to not to be put, not to be, uh, but to just be pleasing in His eyesight. Humble. First Corinthians fifteen and nine. I am the least of the apostles. Paul was let it be known. You know, I've been chosen. Ephesians three and eight. He says, "I am the very least of all the saints." First Timothy, he went to the far, he went to the point to say, "I am the foremost of sinners." He said, "Whatever sin you did here, put me first. He was able to even through a, a, a disgrace, even in the point of being talked about and even being scrutinized. He said, "Here, put me first. I'll go." Humble humility, because God came that we can learn that by giving you shall receive. Out of the greater flows the lesser. God in you will go out and explode instead of the enemy on the world coming in and exploding. Those things, those prides, those, those fears, those, 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 those angers, those unforgiving things will kill. 
the spirit from living and for you operating in humility. When? Right now. Today is your day. Today is your day for the lifestyle, for the, 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 the characteristic change, for, for the, 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 the remodeling of you into the likeness of Christ. Be humble. Serve before being served. Have someone have the seat before you sit and watch God change you, rearrange you, and transform you by the renewing of your mind. We must think it before we can do it in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you today. Lord, we just worship you that you, Lord, are in control. We thank you for your word, Lord, that you have, you have you, you put us on the, on the spotlight today and that you've made us, you holding us accountable to being humble to having the spirit of humility, and we thank you today, Lord. We praise you, Heavenly Father God, that we will not leave this place the same as we came, but, Lord, we will leave changed, rearranged, and transformed by the renewing of our minds. In your son Jesus' name, amen and amen.